So, living the damn life out here, just front row of the Knoxville Nationals, as far as merch is concerned. Even even got the Swindow Speed Lab shirt on the trailer here. It must be nice. It must be nice. Yeah, yeah this week feels good. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully get a good run tomorrow and, and have some more momentum to, to build on. Um, regardless of where I go, you know. Uh, well, obviously, yeah, the Zimco ride was announced yeah, today, I guess. Yeah, uh, really excited about being in the Zimco car. That's just a, I kind of joked today and I said, you know, I, being a, a USAC guy for so long, um, I never got to drive for Paul Hazen and, uh, you know, a long time USAC car owner. And I said, you know, driving that Zimco car, I think is kind of like, like uh, the winged version of Paul Hazen's car, you know, the guys have been around forever. I remember watching that, that car race when I was a, a real little kid. So, right. um, kind of 69 K ish. Yeah. Just kind of, just a cool piece of history, you know, and I, 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 being a classic car guy and somebody that likes vintage stuff, I think it's, um, I might be a little bit more into the history of the, of the sport more so than, than maybe some other guys, but I think it's cool. You know, you, you don't, you know, it's, it's cool to get the opportunity to drive a sprint car for a living, but, but then to, uh, to get to run for guys like that, that have been around so long, I, I think it's really neat and something I won't forget. Well, uh, and, and, and it's going to be interesting to see how they go. Obviously, that's a uh, yeah. Port Royal car more than anything, but I'm sure with yeah. you they may do a little more, but well, what's the plan there? Right now, it's just the Port Royal stuff. We're, we're going to just focus. Not even a Williams Grove Outlaw show? I don't, or I don't. Maybe after the Tuscarora, it might be something we would talk about. Um, but right now, uh, myself and uh, John and Tommy, the crew chief, we all talked, and our focus for now is just going to be having a shot at winning the Tusky. Um, obviously, that car is proven there, so I feel like I'm the one that has the big shoes to fill. Logan did a really good job in that car, and and they've had a lot of success there. So, um, you know, I'm not scared of that. I, I think if the goal is to, to go there and win races or the goal is to go anywhere and win races, you uh, you don't want to shy away from a car just because you're afraid you're not going to run as right. good as you know, the previous guy. I want to... I want to get in the car that that has had the best resume and the best shot of winning, and I think that's that car for Port Royal for sure. Right. Well, and our interview the other night got cut kind of early, and it's funny you, you kind of started touching into more some of the other stuff like uh, yeah. the the hardness of the sport in a way. I mean, obviously your career this year showed a lot of yeah. hardships, uh, and then even touching on the Jacob Allen situation. Uh, yeah. But my phone had died. Uh, yeah. I look at the Jacob Allen thing as like this racing world is really hard like if you sat yeah. down and think of yourself what am i going to be at 60 you're basically going to go to sleep wake up and all you've done is dr- drive race cars yeah. i mean it's that hard of a of a, of a life but you had some yeah. other comments on that i believe yeah i just i just really respected uh jacob you know kind of saying kinda something putting some light on that right. you know how how hard not only the drivers race but all the crew guys, uh, you know, and even some car owners that run up and series down officials. He said, series "You know, officials. Uh, it's just a, it's a, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say that I take driving a sprint car for a living for granted. I absolutely don't. I, I, it's, it's a huge blessing for me in my life to be able to say that, that I do it. Um, but there is a balance, you know, and definitely having two small kids now has opened my eyes up to that. Uh, there's, there's just things that I don't want to miss. There's, there's things that I would not trade." Uh, with my kids that are going to come before driving a race car. Period. Well, but something he was, he was also hitting on that you've got to experience is a lot of these contracts are verbal. You yeah. know, you can be replaced if you want to take a night yeah. off or if you just, somebody yeah. don't like you for some reason one yeah. day. It's it's absolutely the case. With it, with There's no job security or peace of mind. Right. And I think that's just something that you have to be confident in your, uh, you know, your own moral compass or uh, you, you got to be confident in what you say you will and you won't do when you when you take a deal um you know for me now uh that, that's that's part of any negotiation that i have is you know hey look i i'm going to keep my priorities in line and my kids and my family come first and and if a car owner doesn't like that then uh i don't need to be a part of that deal and i think uh you know it's it, it, it is touchy you know because it, it is how you it is how i feed my family in large part um, but I just I don't think uh, I don't think that it's some of that time should be compromised with with your family. You just gotta keep.
keep things keep things in line. I think it, it helps me keep my head screwed on straight. It helps me uh, stay level, you know. And, and I, I think if I didn't have that time with with my kids and my wife and stuff away from the track, then I, I probably wouldn't perform as good. So. Well, and I, I think that's the main reason as to why some people can settle for just like a PA gig. You yeah. know, they're at home with their family yeah. every night all week, and then they race on the weekends, and then. Two yeah. or three weekends of the year, they go and travel to Knoxville or an Eldora right. and, and or Florida, and yeah. and that's a little more easier to yeah. mentally comprehend than a yeah. traveling circus like the Outlaws are. It definitely is. You know, I, I still, uh, you know, the young kid in me from when I was real little would, uh, you know, I still have some of that in me where I, I would love to, before I'm done racing, run the Outlaw Tour a couple times at least. Um, you know, and I love I love to being out on the road with the All Stars, and uh, as long as as long as you can balance it, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I, I have a motorhome and my whole family goes with me, so it, it opens up the opportunity for us to, you know, when we're out on the road, if we don't feel like going back home, uh, we'll take the kids somewhere cool, uh, find a water park. My son loves fishing, so we'll find somewhere to go fishing, or maybe find some friends on the road to stay with or something. So. We've kind of found a way to, you know, still enjoy all the time that we're on the road. But, um, but if that wasn't the case, then you know, my kids and my family would definitely come first. And I and I think that's, you know, kind of how we started the conversation, talking about you know, uh, Jacob, uh, kind of pointing that out. I, I have a lot of respect for that because I think I think some some drivers uh, are so consumed with keeping their seat that they'll they'll do anything compromise anything to stay there and i think sometimes the drivers crews uh officials some of the, sometimes maybe we are kind of put in those situations because uh there are no contracts and and it is uh it's very cutthroat you know it's it's a uh, hard who to trust too so maybe be trying to take your seat being your buddy you know yeah i mean i, mean, I, I don't you know i don't really look into that stuff too much you know I but you see like, it. it you do see it but I chalk it up as business, you know. It, it's uh, I've got a lot of great friends in this in this deal, and um, you know I, I don't I don't let things like that come between friends. You know I know everybody's out here trying to do the same thing as me, which is you know make a paycheck driving a race car. So, but that seems to be the hard uh, thing to do. It it is hard to do. Yeah, it's it's hard to separate you know business from from you know personal matters, friendships, and stuff like that. But. Uh, you know, that's the same reason why Tony Vermeer and I can still uh, talk today. You know, I... I How has that went? Uh, it's been fine. You know, Was I, it fine initially? Yeah. I or mean, has it been a conversation deal or, or no, over time better or... We, Tony and I have just always kind of had the understanding, just, just like I mentioned, that it's it's business. You know, I don't have to I don't have to like the situation. I don't, I don't like uh, being separated from a team that I was with for three and a half years, but... Um, you know, call it what it is. Tony kept me in a race car for three and a half years. And, right. And I but you weren't blindsided at all in the situation, at the slightest. I mean, I mean, it seemed like it. It seemed like it from yes, the outside looking in. With yes the, the no, shirt, the shirt order was the main way to hit that everybody yeah, said he didn't know kind of deal. But like I said, I, I I've raced long enough now that um, nothing really blindsides you. You know, you just you know that that that's just how sprint car racing is sometimes or racing in general really and um you know no i i still have a ton of respect for tony and uh you know obviously clinton is still there and i don't uh, i don't feel like it's it doesn't do me mentally any good to wish ill on that team or my brother-in-law or anything else it's uh you know and, and tony is i still consider tony a friend and and somebody that i respect and and uh i don't I'm not that guy to burn bridges or anything like that, you know. Um, I, I know it's an aggravating situation, uh, looking at it from the outside, and, and parts of it were aggravating for me. But um, you know, Tony's a car owner that wants to win races as, as bad as really anybody that I've driven for, and if he feels like he needs to do something to maybe make his team better, and, and if I'm a part of that, then. You know, I, I get it. It's that's that's the business side of it. But uh, I still um, I still look at we had three and a half years together, and uh, in sprint car racing, that's hard to do. Uh, you know, three and a half years with one car is not really heard of. 
that much. So, right. Um, Especially on an all-star level, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, outlaw level, you see that, but all-star, all-star yeah. regional, anything but outlaw yeah. level, you kind of it's hard to find. Yeah. So, you know, I, I that that's why I have to. That's why I have to, you know, look at that situation that way, just because. Um, really, if I'm being honest, I think I think three and a half years ago when Tony. Uh, gave me the opportunity to drive that car it was probably at a time when not a lot of people would so um, you know uh, I, I, I won't forget that well now it's obviously it's you are in the A main both of y'all you and Carrie yeah uh, and then now the Zimco car so it's yeah halfway worked out yeah halfway it's, it's worked out I mean and I think I think uh, as long as you as long as uh, you you choose to uh, to say that it's going to work out, then it eventually will. You know, uh, sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it's not. But um, if you choose to be sour about it and go home and pout, and you don't make phone calls, you don't stay present at the racetrack, and uh, you don't try to take advantage of every seat that you plop in, then it's probably not going to work out. But um, as long as you just stay mentally tough and, and you don't you don't give up, you keep making phone calls, you keep showing up to the racetrack, and uh, keep trying to capitalize on getting in a car uh, that's that's a good opportunity and gas it for, for lack right. of a better term. Then uh, eventually it does work out as long as you as long as you choose to make it work out. Um, well, and now you're the face of Port Royal. <laughs> I mean, in a weird like way. Said, big, big in a weird way. Fill, I'm just saying. I mean. Yeah, big, big shoes to fill there. But um, I love racing at Port Royal. Uh, it's so much fun to go there just because it's, it's a big track that races like a short track it, in a way it kind of races like a short track it races right on the wall when your car's right and it's really stuck there uh, it's, it's hard to find somewhere that you have more fun than that actual fun driving a race car you know where you're actually in the middle of my, in the middle of a race sometimes I've called myself going like man this place is a blast to race. right you know it's 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 kind of that kind of like you know going back to jumping in a, a go-kart with a bunch of your buddies up here at Slideways and just having a good time. The place is just cool. And uh, uh, the, the fans there are obviously really engaged in that place, that racetrack. Right. When you go there for the Tusky, everybody's super welcoming. And um, the people that work at the track are super accommodating. So I'm excited about it. I think, like again, I think it's going to be a neat opportunity. And uh, I'm pretty optimistic about it. I think it'll be good. Okay, and 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 your dad still hates me, correct? No, I think I think he's I think he saw both sides of it. I, I think I think he was a little mad that that uh, maybe there was an opinion that I was underperforming there. But uh, you know, like I said, that's uh, again that's a choice too. I can I can choose to listen to everybody else's opinion about me, or I can listen to my own opinion about myself. So right. Well, I, I would just hate uh, to see what happens when real media gets into this. You know, the NFL guys got a thousand people just dogging them every week. Uh, you know, the NASCAR guys, they got millions just saying that you suck, you know. Yeah. Facebook, YouTube, FS1, they're on national TV dogging oh, yeah. a guy, you know. I mean. I, I, I welcome it. You know, it, it's. Uh, well, I'm not I saying mean, I dogged you, but I'm just saying, uh, like, that kind of judgment, critics. I mean, yeah. even me, just me being a one guy is yeah. nothing in comparison to some other sports where it's way more. Yeah. No, you know. I, I think, uh, I mean, that's, 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 what, that's what drives the fan base. That's what keeps people coming here and keeps people interested is the stories and you get to go you know, prove me wrong yeah you know looking at looking at guys that maybe a sportscaster thinks he can do it another one thinks he can and you know people that are watching start to form their own opinions and, right and that's what forces them all to come come here and watch these races i think it's great so now i need to go to tusky port and be like he's gonna suck and horrible and then when you win you can get out and say screw the Chaz at the end you right know? yeah no, and then the crowd goes wild you know exactly yeah no i i've that Larson probably. did it for years. I mean, he did do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I probably, I probably would rather just uh, stick to uh, stick to winning races and keeping my mouth shut. I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to run my mouth too much or anything like that. I'd let everybody else do it. And uh, well, you are going to PA. Dietrich is there. So. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Dietrich too. I, I like Dietrich. A lot of respect for him. He. Uh, he calls it like a season. There's right, nothing, right. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, right. I'm cool with it. You know, I. I, uh, as long as I'm going to the racetrack and, and uh, working on myself, trying to hone my own craft and getting to where I can run up front and, you know, provide for my family and, and uh, enjoy racing, then everybody else can have their opinion. Okay. Uh, I'll see you at Port. Sure. Okay, then. We got, we're going to build you up now. All right. That'll work. In, in what kind of way? I don't know. 
You, I don't know. You could, I guess. I, I guess don't know. That's totally I got. Uh, does your dad have any blood pressure medication? You know, or. I mean, no, if I get to he, talking he too is, much, he you may 62. boil over. I mean, yeah. I ain't trying to kill somebody now, you know. Uh, I, I'd, he'd, be a, he'd be a pretty tough guy to kill. I okay, think. okay. Yeah. Well, all right, well, I guess good luck tomorrow and then Port Royal, obviously. I appreciate that. All right. Thanks. This is how we do it.